what I'll show you briefly today is just the power of what you can do with taking a banner ad. And, and the logic is really very similar across each different tactic we have. So what we're discussing is basically a custom image input into what Mark already demonstrated to you guys in terms of the point and click variation of like a regular email or a landing page. But the logic of what we're showing you how to do in InDesign with the add-on of uh, XMPy is something that can be the, the same process you go through is whether it's for a banner ad, whether it's for uh, a custom image uh, for a banner image that's on an email um, that has either perhaps a, a background image and some text on it. Same thing if you actually went as far as to co-brand like a, um, a whole, uh, say, report or a document or some type of marketing material in that respect. So that's the one thing we want to draw a parallel uh, to for you. Okay, so I know Mark already went over this probably with you um, in terms of the market assets, but these things really come into, um, into play when you're doing the actual uh, template creation too, because based on what, what you're developing a template for, um, you could have uh, logos that are already loaded to the partner accounts um, that come into the templates automatically. And that's kind of what I want to show you today. Um, and and I, I just made like a, a basis of a, like a faux uh, banner ad potentially that you could be doing this on um, to give you probably the best uh, impression of how to go about doing that. So basically it all starts with, with having uh, some type of banner ad. I'm in InDesign, and you can start with a canvas uh, starting out. But ideally, the, the idea is when you even come to, say, like the emails that we already built for you guys uh, as an initial run to show you, and you have like this email, and you take a look at the email, and it has uh, text on the banner, uh, it has a background image, um, you have information here in the email, and I knew you already went over all the point and click aspects, but um, on the surface level, um, if I wanted to change that background image, I could change it to, to this gentleman here and click Save. And this is an engine for a custom image that's in a banner that's been pulled into an email template that's already active. And then if I was to hit Refresh on this email, it would be that simple for me to create a new email with a different background image. And you know, this is a, a basic rendition where it primarily just allows you to change the background image but we, could, we can even reconfigure it so that the text that you see on this uh, first banner here with the woman, we can make that text, ed text editable right here inside of uh, this banner setup as well so that we can type in different text and amounts of it as we need to complement whatever the background image or the message of the email is uh, in tandem. So that way when we go to create variations of one email template structure for different content, we have the, the latitude and the scalability to have different ideas and different messaging presented very clearly. The, the logic behind this is, is built inside of uh, our content manager area of our system. And one of the things that we, we try to do is, uh, especially when you, it comes to co-branding um, and building things, sometimes it's, it's simpler if like a partner logo comes into the template itself and it's resized. That way you don't have to worry about the partner logo either being uploaded improperly at too large of a scale and blowing out the formatting of a banner ad or something like that. And you can you know, set decisive controls over the content that is being co-branded for the partner. So it's mindless on their end and not having to worry about all those different formatting issues. Um, and then for you, it creates uh, some good consistency in the system where everything that you intended to look uh, actually comes out that way. So what I'll do is I'll just show you uh, how to build a, a simple custom image here that we can, uh, we can use um, in the system. And we'll start with a banner ad. And like I said, everything that you see here in terms of tabs between custom image, banner ad, um, or even a direct mail, they all use the same logic. And you start by creating a new template. And so we'll click on add a new banner ad template. And we'll call this one Convault Banner Ad. And so initially it brings you into this, um, into this uh, template area in the content manager, and it gives you some basic instruction of what you need to do. And step one is always create the fields to the right here that you need that will coincide with the data that needs to be loaded um, into the banner ad or direct mail piece or custom image 
Um, the second thing is for us to download a sample file, which is basically a CSV file that maps the fields that we'll be uh, adding into this template into a data file that we can then load into InDesign uh, to match up accordingly with the design element that we're, we're putting together. After all is said and done and that matching has taken place in InDesign using the XMPy overlay tool, then we'll export a specific package file or IE zip file that has a special extension. We'll upload that back into here, into the template, and then that will bring together the cohesion of the list of the items that we've built here that are necessary for the fields and the matching that we've done in the InDesign document back into the system as a holistic piece. Um, and then that will be able to help uh, communicate with the InDesign server that is connected to our system to generate said banner. So we'll, we'll do this very simply and very quickly um, just to show you. So initially we can add some assets, and there are already existing assets that we plan on using in this, um, i.e. the company logo. And so I'm just going to select the company logo here and then add selected assets to the template because I want that to be included into my template as part of the the, the information that is pulled together in the banner. And then from there, I'm just going to simply choose from these editable options, and I'm going to choose text area because that gives me the most latitude to enter the messaging I want. It gives me a, a better visual space rather than just like a text string, which you know you would only use for like one word, uh, maybe a button text or something like that. But this, I'm going to putting be putting some text into a banner, like that we saw in that 300 by 250 uh, canvas I, I showed you a second ago. Um, so we'll just call this banner main copy. We're going to mark this field as required because we want the banner to have some text. Um, you can mark it no if you don't want it required. That way someone maybe doesn't need to. Um, but uh, So we'll leave it marked yes because we want some, some text on this specific banner. Now you can choose to have this editable by the account user, i.e. the partner. So it's really up to you based on the marketing strategy if you want to give partners the latitude to be able to change the marketing. Um, the normal perspective is, is no. So in that respect, we would just select no. And the things that you would give them control over may not necessarily be on a banner ad, but maybe something within an email or uh, perhaps on a landing page where there's an area with a value proposition for information about themselves. Uh, but if this is you know, approved marketing that's coming from you guys and from Commvault, um, that's something that probably you don't want the, the partner fiddling with um, to change the, the scope of the marketing. So we're just going to click Save on that. So we have company logo. We have some main copy. We're also going to have a call to action button uh, in the email so we can use a text string for that, and we can just call this CTA button text because that aptly describes what it will be. We can mark no on that as well. So we have the main copy, button text, and the logo. Um, what we'll also do is we'll throw an image there. That way we can change perhaps the, the color scheme of, of a, a button. Maybe we want a red one, email, uh, one banner ad. Maybe we want a blue one another. We'll call this uh, button BG color. We'll do another image here, and this one will be um, call this product image. That way we can put an image of, of a product, which is normally probably going to be the, the biggest area um, as the backdrop for the banner. And we can do one more image, this banner background image. Okay. So this is our banner ad template. And just so we have perspective, we can just put 300 by 250 here so we know what size we're working with. And so we have one, two, three, four, five, six fields that we're going to load for our template. So I'm just going to download this file here so that I can load it into. So as far as building the template in the system, that's all it takes. Um, you build the necessary fields. Obviously, the more complicated the data is on whatever you're creating, the more fields you have, the more simple it is, the less you'll have. So our next step then is to go ahead and go into InDesign. In, in, in InDesign, uh, we've created a new document 
at you know the scale of 300 by 250 as a canvas. I've gone ahead and I pulled in some some bits and pieces here that are probably going to be really beneficial to like creating a um, a simple banner ad. So we got the Convolt logo. Um, I brought in like an image of a product. Um, we got a rectangle square here that we'll probably use for the actual part of the logo to load in, and then some some basic text here um, that corresponds to perhaps the messaging on the overall uh, banner ad. The one thing that we added in that template that we probably want to add here as well is uh, just a full-on background to the overall banner ad. And, uh, and what you can do is, you know, you can basically just take uh, either shape tool or you can take um, a dynamic image tool, and you can create a frame at the same size as the banner as for a backdrop. Uh, we can take off the stroke because we don't need that. Um, I can fill this initially with white if I want, um, just to give us, or maybe I'll, I'll do a lighter shade of this color just, uh, just so we have some contrast so we can see what we're working with. So what you can do is we can take that and we'll just drop that to the to the background. So you can see the the regions and the areas of of information that we have here. So let's say this is our initial uh, banner ad that was created. Now, if you've done this in Photoshop, you can obviously recreate this in InDesign, or if, um, if you're going to be creating new marketing um, pieces, it's when you're going to do custom images with the XMP integration, it's probably better that you either design it in InDesign initially. That way, you can skip a step of having to convert it. Uh, and obviously InDesign and, and Photoshop are very similar in, in their layout capabilities for the most part. So with uh, your InDesign loaded, you'll also uh, receive details um, on how to bring in the XMPy overlay, which is um, what gives you the allowance to do the melding of the, the fields that you've done here in the system with the data that you're going to be loading into the actual document. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to click in this menu here and go to Link to Data Source to show me uh, the data source that I've already saved to my computer that we saved from the Structure Web System. And I'll come in, I'll select that CSV file, and I'll open that and uh, just click OK and give it a couple of seconds. It says Data Link Successful. Now there are some additional fields in here perhaps um, that I don't need um, based on the fact that this is a banner ad template. So I can actually just go in and I can clear those out because I won't need like uh, first name, phone number, and things like that. Initially everything will come in as a text um, a door or a text um, option here. Um, so initially if I know something is going to be uh, an image, I can go ahead and click on that specific item in the list, and then I can right click and I can change the type of it to what I will eventually be loading in terms of information to it. So in this instance, the company logo will be a graphic. So I'll click that and change that to a graphic. Copy will remain text. This will remain text. BG color, that will be a graphic as well. So right clicking on it and then choosing type from the drop down. I'll do graphic for that as well, as well as the product image graphic and banner background image will be a graphic as well. One thing you want to do is we can save a copy of this um, just so we have it. I'll save that as a template, but then I'll, I'll save another version. So we have a, a core version and then we'll, do, we'll call this one merge because we're merging it with our actual data. So at this point what you can do is you can come in and you can start replacing the values of what's here and, and match it with the actual data that it will receive information from from the structured web system. So when it comes to this background image, I just turn off some of these, these top layers. So in terms of the background image, we have that set to a color right now just so we can see some distinction. But if I have banner um, background image, I'm just going to double click on that. And you see now it associates this specific object with this data field. And so now they're linked. Um, I can then click on it, right click on it, and I can change um, I can change the display properties of it to to make sure that the fitting 
of the information that I'm putting into it is, is doing exactly what I want it to do. Um, so I can choose dynamic graphic properties, and I can tell it to uh, fit the content proportionally and center it. And then when I do, that means that whatever is loaded will automatically be centered and made proportion to the frame itself. Um, so now this data is merged with that specific field. As you can see, it's highlighting every time I click on it. Now I can do the same thing. Well, you can you can hard code the Common Vault logo into it. Um, you can also build it from the front end as an as an upload option for yourself. Um, in this instance, we'll just leave it hard coded on here. Um, this image that I have here, what I will want to do is um, I'm not going to perhaps always use that image, so I'll just draw a new text frame to match the size of the image that's here. And I'll use this specific text frame as what I will load in the data for the uh, product images that we have listed here. And I can do the same thing with the graphic uh, properties of this. I can choose to tell it to fit proportionally in center. And ultimately, I don't necessarily need these, um, these placeholder colors anymore because I'm going to load data into it. So I can even clear those out once I've associated with it and I have something to actually continue to give me a visual of it. So just working our way up in the, the hierarchy of the structure, same thing we hear. This is going to ultimately be the company logo, which is the market asset that we added to the template. So I can double click on that. Same thing with the graphic properties. I can choose fit proportionally in center if I like. And uh, I can drop the color off of that as well now that I have. And so you can slowly see that everything is coming together in this uh, having um, all the information loaded to it that's going to be necessary. Now the other thing that we had here was this text box. So we can select the text in that text box, and then we can connect that with the actual main banner copy option that we have listed here, and you see it then connects that and labels that as default text. I can go a step further with this because maybe I'm going to do translations or maybe I'm going to perhaps put additional text in here for a different variation. And I can right click on this and I can go all the way down to the XMPy uh, overlay property menu for text, and I can choose dynamic story length handling. This basically means that when text goes into it that either doesn't fit the scope of the initial size and height vari variation, I can give it rules to follow so that it can still put the text in and, and make it fit appropriately, but obviously within reason. So in this little uh, properties menu, you can choose copy fit on. I don't want to set any um, over. I don't want to set any um, underflow because I have the the core basis of the the height and font size, but I want to set some parameters if it goes over the intended amount of text I have put in. And I can set this to perhaps scale the text down to 80% um, and change the, the letter spacing to 80%. And the line height, I'll do at 80% as well, I'll just keep everything even keel. And then the step option here is basically the increments at which it tries to size it down to fit. If I leave it at 1%, I feel like that's too big of a jump where I may need a small increment just to make you know one more word fit. So I'll put it at the base level, which is 0.1%. And this is just a preference thing. And that way it will do small creeps to be able to make this, the sizing on the text fit appropriately um, instead of doing large jumps, which you know may give me too much or too little. So we'll click OK on that. And so we have that in. Um, now the only other thing we probably want to add is maybe we'll add a, a learn more button, uh, just some type of call to action. Um, and we can just basically take uh, this learn more button and place this in here. Let's see if we turn the learn more button on. And then we'll create another frame on top of this for our text. 
rid of the stroke. That's there. We'll just type our default text here. Learn more. Change font. that text we can go to text frame options vertically center that text as well and then we'll do the dynamic story length handling on this that's a point one increment we talked about so now we have a layer for our button text as well as um, our actual background uh, for the button. All right, so at that point, we're pretty much good to go. Uh, we'll just click Save on our, our layout. And uh, we'll just click around to make sure everything is associated as we set up. And you can see that the selection on the right here is changing every time I click on something new. So it looks like we should be all good in that respect. So then at that point, we're just going to come here to our XMPy window, and we're going to export. And I'm going to now export this package file into my folder. I'm going to choose Campaign Package File, and then I'm going to click Save. It's going to take a, step, a couple of seconds. It finishes. Then I can come back here. I'm using InDesign CC, which is the most current and uh, suggested platform to use for the InDesign. I'm just going to choose and browse for that folder uh, for the, the CPKG file that I just created. I'm going to click to to load it. Click Upload. Give it a couple of seconds to process. So yeah, it's finished loading, and you can see now there's a generic view of the banner ad based on what was the last thing we saw in InDesign. Um, but now once you've created this template, if you switch back to the Tactics tab, away from the Templates tab, um, and if we go to uh, the Banner Ads tab where we're developing this, you see that it's created a default variation of this specific um, template that we've built with all the fields that we've had um, listed here. And so uh, with that in mind, um, now we have something that we can work from to be able to, to go ahead and, and build our template out accordingly. So the first thing we can do is obviously uh, we can go here to the banner main copy. Now if, you've, if we, have this, um, we have this listed somewhere, you can just copy and paste it in. Um, if you want to you know, create text on the fly, you could do that as well. Just take some, some basic text that we had like in the demo version and we'll paste that in and save. Um, for the CTA button text, we still want that to say learn more. Um, now, uh, you can also create swatches for yourself, which is uh, something definitely that we suggest. Um, and you know, for any project that you're working on, you can create a set of swatches based on the color schemes that you're working with for the, the specific campaign. Um, and then you can use those as, as a base for what you're developing. Normally we build color swatches uh, just as a, as a reference at like say 20 pixels by 20 pixels. You can make them the size you want, but we feel like you know, that's a, a good base size you know, for a color swatch just to have some of the visual to, to recognize the color properly. So I'm just going to choose banner background and I'm just going to choose Swatches folder that I already have available. I'm just going to choose white for the main background color. I can save that. The product image, we have that uh, too that we can use as a reference. Something I just pulled for this demo. So we can load that in. Um, and then we just need a button background color, and so we can choose we can choose a red color. 
So now you got values for everything. Click Save. Give it a couple seconds to pull everything together. And this will be our first look at it, and then we can see if we need any adjustment, we can make it. But looking at it initially, we've got ourselves a banner. And the only thing that will obviously populate once we pull into a test account is the logo here. Uh, we've got our text that looks proper. We've got our background image. We've got to learn more. Oh, something's not right with the, the BG of the um, the button color. So we could take a look at that and go back to the template and see perhaps what update we may need to make with that to make an adjustment for that. But just to show you for the sake of um, getting through it, and that's the thing, once you pull it in, you can see if there's any small tweaks that need to be made um, to get it going properly. And you can always revert back to uh, your InDesign document, and then you can do it so that uh, you can make those adjustments. I'm just going to set this to be able to pull and so that we can uh, pull it properly into our test account. And that way if I went to the library in my test account, I have a banner ad here that I now have access to. And I'm going to choose Customize and Download to bring that into my test account. And now we have a banner. Okay, so that's the basic overall process. Like I said, you can make it more in-depth depending on what kind of um, piece you're building. Um, this is a simple banner ad, and obviously you can do these in the various sizes, 728 by 90, 300 by 250, um, 600 by 160, or 160 by 600. Um, now, the same logic and the, the, the tools and everything that I've showed you is the same thing you would do if you had a banner image on an email or if you were building one for a landing page. It's just used in a different medium, um, and you would build it uh, for custom images that are included on emails and landing pages in the custom image section of the system rather than this, which is the banner ad section or the DM section for direct mail, um, as you know, those are tactics within themselves. Go back to the content manager for a second. So basically, let's see, button BG color. So I've loaded a, a color there, but for whatever reason it's not showing. So we would just want to make sure we double check the layering that we have in InDesign just to make sure that it was proper. So yeah. this is what I have here as far as the, the button BG color. So it's linked. So let's make sure um, – this is our button we want to make sure. Let's check in the layering. It's on on a higher level. Okay. So then we can check the dynamic uh, graphic properties. I don't think we changed that. Maybe we want to fit content proportionally and centered. Um, or we could choose another option uh, for that where we could uh, fill uh, – Proportionally in center so that it'll fill the the entire frame. We do that. Um, pull our our text back down over it. Let's just save and then re-export and see if that makes a difference. Just gonna export back to our CPKG file again. Three. I'll export. I can go back to the template level tab. And now that I have a new version of it, I can just simply come here, go back to my folder, and just re upload the, the new one right on top of what's already there. And we can come back to the tactics tab. Come back to our default tactic, and you know, even if we wanted to go ahead and change the color of it, you know, let's say we wanted to just, you know, do a simple, you know, blue. Give it a couple seconds to process, and you can do gradients and things too. Yeah. Um, we can make sure the text is white. This time the text was black. You know, so that's small things you'll notice based on your setup. You know yeah. that you maybe want to change the text to white so that it's it's more readable. 
Um, so those are all small tweaks and things that you can make. And, you know, even if I went back into the test account and click Save on it again, whatever the values are that already have populated based on my version, it will work. If I deleted this and re-pulled it from the top, it will bring in what you see here uh, with yeah. the blue button. So that, that's the basic idea.